welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Mara Catherine Sippel, is a painter who creates very interesting multi-layered acrylic paintings. And she is studied with well-known local artists, and she's here to demonstrate her techniques. So welcome, Mara. Thank you so much, Sally. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background in art. How did you get started in this painting technique? In this painting technique, I really looked for artists that I could um, emulate mm -hmm. and uh, what I really love is color as many artists do right. and so I started with color and then moved on to things like composition, balance, harmony um, and so on and so forth. So how long have you been painting? I started painting again uh, when I had a uh, my son turned about two years old uh, mm -hmm. Prior to that, I had been painting on and off, but not sincerely. Right. So uh, once I found a, a good place for him and a good uh, uh, um, schedule, cool. Then I could. So do it. yeah. So for several years now, you've been painting. Yes. So who in the local artist community do you follow, and have you learned from? So I would say my, my first real um, impression of a local artist was with Melissa Chandon. Mm -hmm. And I saw her works in a local gallery in Healdsburg and fell in love with the way she painted. So I followed up with uh, researching about her and mm -hmm. a little bit about her style. And so there's a lot of similarities in our style, I think. Um, and I do take classes with uh, Caroline Mustard at oh, the... Yeah. Um, Palo Alto Pacific League of Palo Alto. Yes, so the Pacific Art League. Pacific Art League, absolutely, yeah. yes. And yeah. she's been wonderful because she focuses on color a lot. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Cool, so interesting. So why don't we take a look at some of your paintings and you can talk a little bit about your palette and how you put it together. Okay, sounds great. So this one is a cityscape. So tell me about this one. It is a cityscape and the cityscapes that I began doing, um, these are about three foot by three foot cityscapes and I began doing them from very small paintings of cityscapes and the smaller painting that I first started with was one in oil that I did plein air and I just noticed that the shapes I became more abstracted because the shapes, I, I noticed them as bolder than the things around them. And it was sort of my attempt to simplify something that looks often chaotic right. with lots of detail. And how did you choose those colors? What was your Yeah, thought? so those colors are um, really a primary color palette. Um, and they were chosen because of their brightness and that's why I named it Ciudad Briante. Um, and you can see some of the uh, history of San Francisco just in the very bottom there with the three triangles representing the, um, the painted ladies and mm -hmm. some of the other forms that might look familiar to people, including the bridge in the background, yeah. of course. Here's another one. This is another one. It's similar. It's, it's, much, it's a much smaller one. And it's just called The City. And it's done with the basic same principles of trying to balance out the colors in using the palette of bright colors uh, against a bright blue sky with the bridge in the background once again. And some hints of the streets in the background. I like this one with the, it looks like ultramarine blue mm -hmm. as the in-between color. That really makes it stand it out. It kind of pops a little bit that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Uh, this one is a little bit different palette. As you can see, it's more muted palette. Uh, Golden Gate Fog, because I've added the fog in the background there. Um, and 
I kind of did a really crazy homage to the Twin Towers back there, you can see. Um, and uh, it yes. could be, you know, except that it's the Golden Gate Bridge, it could be just about any city. So that's another thing I like about doing the cityscapes is that it just is rem reminiscent of all kinds of urban cities. And so when you're looking at this, you were talking about balancing mm -hmm. and composition. So talk right. a little bit about how you chose balance here. Right. So balancing the colors is um, pretty, um, I, I move from one side of the canvas to the other side of the canvas, picking my colors as I go along and I make sure that my palette itself is balanced in terms of where I put the colors on the palette so that I can keep the order in which I'm working. Interesting. Yeah, I like the way the green is spread out through that one. Yeah, it's this really is nice. a nice color green. This one's different. Wow. <laughs> this is a very different one, inspired by a trip that I took to Canada. Uh, with family friends, and I was very, um, I was, the, the roads and the drives through these beautiful lakes and areas of wilderness were so stunning, and in some cases there was a steepness to them um, that often came from the, uh, the rock formations that outlined the roads, and so I kind of took that formation and decided that it, it looked like it was a road that kind of didn't end. You weren't sure where it's going, but we were going to Nana's cabin. Cool. So I like the blues in the road. That's really interesting. It gives an yeah. illusion of speed. Mm -hmm. So, and this, when you look at this, is there an artist that you were thinking of or like emulating at all? I, I have um, definitely taken some uh, lessons from looking at Diebenkorn and okay. um, some other artists and Wayne Thiebaud, of course, Thiebaud, uh, um, with the colors and the landscape formation, the shapes. There's Yeah, definitely the shapes and the kind of lines and separation yes, of colors. Yes. That's really, really beautiful. Yes. Well, this is a different color palette. This is a completely different color palette. It also was reminiscent of my trip to Canada in the Muskoka Lake area. And this was at sunset. And I uh, got to know the painter Tom Thompson, one of the group of seven there. Wow. And uh, looked, looked at uh, his paintings quite carefully. And there's a lot of bold foreground. And then as you can see that it, it goes back into the background and much more faded gives you that feeling of depth to it, and then the sunset color. And the sunset color, oh yes, and there's another one, of the Muskoka sunset too, and that one is also reminiscent of that um, period of time traveling. And we have, again, th there's a very dark, dark element to the painting, as well as the sun reflecting on these lakes that were absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. Very nice. Wow, this one is really cool. I like the definition in the shadows and what you've done. Thank you. This one is um, actually super fun to paint because I knew exactly what I was trying to do. It was definitely going to be a cityscape of San Francisco, the skyline. And how did you choose the colors here? And the colors here are just a similar bright palette, very primary color oriented, and just trying to get tones and different shapes. Great, well, you have a demonstration for us. I do. So let's go over and take a look at the demo. Okay. Really like the way the colors in this San Francisco skyline are so bright. Thank you so much. So my demonstration today is going to be of a boat. And I do use some of the tools I use include my phone um, because I often use photographs that I've taken or photos from the public domain. And right now I'm working on this one which I have cropped. 
So you're going to be painting a boat. I'm looks painting like. a boat, a cropped picture of a boat. Uh, this boat is um, going to be, I painted a background already, and the background is of the, of a dark ocean. I may change that later. Mm -hmm. It depends on the layering that I decide to do. So um, I, I started with an outline here. Um, because I won't be able to paint the whole thing, but I'll show you a bit of my palette and how I work this. And some of my tools also will show up while I'm doing this. This is going to be titanium white, which I use a lot of. That's why there's a large <laughs> a tub of tub. it, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on my palette here. And I try to be very um, sparse with my paints. So I don't want to waste too much of them. This is um, phthalo green with a blue hue that I'm going to mix with magenta. And it makes an absolute beautiful kind of lots of different purple shades to that. I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use some black. I know some artists say you shouldn't use black because you can always mix black, but I'm not of that school I of like thought. Black. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in handy. And then I have a, um, an ultramarine blue that I'll also use. And we'll start with that. And maybe if I have enough time, I'll use some vermilion to surprise you. Great. So right now, I'm going to look at this. And I'm going to go over some of this outline a little bit, just to show you how I make the definition. And the definition just comes with simply going over those lines. I'll put my glasses on, it'll help me a little bit. And always trying to keep the lines when they need to be parallel. And one thing that I do love about acrylic painting, in my opinion, it feels like acrylic paints are easier to uh, make mistakes because it does dry quickly and you can paint over it. Exactly. Although some people will say the same is true of oil painting in the opposite, in that it doesn't dry quickly, so you don't have to rush to paint over it. So I'm just going to show you some of this outlining technique. So what kind of brush are you using? This is a, um, that's a great question because this is one of my favorite brushes. It's a, it's a, it's a half inch bright brush. Um, bright really sh means that it's shorter than um, shorter than the longer one uh, and I have more control with it. So if I were to have a brush for example with with uh, that was let's see if I have yes like this you can see the difference right there. That one is a lot longer mm -hmm. and I have less control over this handling this brush although it's good for some things but I do prefer the brights. Um, and I definitely have very specific tools that I do like to use. This, as you can see, is going to be a bench right here, one of the benches of the boat. Um, I'm, I've, gone, I've gone in with the shadows here. Um, let's see, I'm going to use, I'm going to pick a different brush, also a bright. And this one, I'm going to show you how I'm going to mix these two colors here. This is the um, phthalo blue and the magenta. And you can see that it's going to make a gorgeous kind of a purpley color. And then that purple color would be for the darker areas. So maybe that purple color is going to go up here because this is going to be in shadow. That's going to be in shadow right there. So did you use the same phthalo blue color in the background? That is different. Oh, this different. is the ultramarine, ultramarine. blue okay. mixed with the phthalo. So, so there's a little bit of both. It so has a little why. bit of both, but not the magenta in it. Right. And then if I add a little bit of white to this mixture here, I just make a lighter shade of that purplish color. And that's a gorgeous, that, those are great shadow colors because this is going to be a little bit in the sunlight here because the, the um, light is going to be coming 
from this side into the boat that way. Okay. So that's what we're trying to achieve, which is why, let me see, that this part is going to be white down here, but you can see that this, this is in the shade a little bit. The white's really on top of that and kind of going over the top of the boat. So you have these white yes. highlights where it's going over the top of the boat. So I can even go lighter to this side here. All along that side right there. So all of these decisions you've made in advance before you even started your sketch? That is correct. I've looked very carefully at the photograph and looked at the shading and seen what, uh, where I need to put which kinds of, uh, which tones, which value, well, I'm sorry, which values, the values are really what's important here. And then I often leave a little bit of the underpaint to show through. That creates the, the, um, that creates the little line that um, is separating the boat part pieces from each other, kind of. I'll leave that under there um, so that it's not just always looking like this kind of straight line. It's got some underpainting into it. And if I don't have enough of that underpainting showing through, I can always step back in and mix a little bit of a different hue. I put too much black in that, but um, I can go back here and add a little white to that. And that makes kind of a grayish color, and that tone can also go in here for a bit of a separation of those two colors. And I might put some there and some there, and maybe I'll, since that's so dark, I'll go along there with it. And you can see that will accent it. Yeah. And some places that will show up. So that is how I would go about doing this whole entire structure. And then, it, again, as I said before, I, I never get scared because I always know. And Caroline Mustard told me this, never, ever, ever give up. So <laughs> if you think you've made a mistake, you just keep going. And down here, it's super dark. Um, this is the bottom of the boat. And the bottom of the boat's real dark. So I just added some, some ultramarine blue and a little bit of black into that. And that'll really pop out. So since we don't have a whole lot of time uh, today to do all of this. I'm interested in seeing the vermilion. Well, that's what I'm about to get to, I think, because. Because right now I see a lot of like blue tones. Yeah. That will come through. And then I, what I'll do, just for fun, is take a little bit of the vermilion uh, this is a little bit of a wider brush. This brush I call the magic wand. This is a fantastic brush for doing large painting or large swaths. And it's a bright also. It's, it's, it's um, meaning that, again, it's a little bit shorter. Let me get some vermilion out here, and I'll show you where the vermilion is going to go as soon as I open this up so that it comes out correctly. Oh, yep. New too. There we go. A new tube. I always like a new tube. New tube. That's right. So this little guy, I'm going to take this, and it's going to be the bottom down here. And it might oh, take interesting. It might take me a couple of layers to do this to get the color that I want and the tone that I want. So that's sort of like the reflection in the water. Well, this is or the bottom no, of the boat. No, this is the color. It's the color of the boat. The okay. Boat, the boat's going to have this white stripe in the middle of it, okay. which I'm going to make uh, a little bit, I'm going to tone that white stripe down a little bit because this is in the shadows. This is where it's, the sun is not hitting it, really. It's kind of coming down, but it'll have a light reflection. So this, is, this vermilion is not going to be super bright vermilion. In fact, in fact, I might even add a touch bit of white to that vermilion. And see how that pops? Yes. That really pops. That's going to look good. So 
So that's going to come around like that. <laughs> that looks great. Yeah, and then once I tone down this this middle um, this middle white stripe there to be more of a grayish tone. Well, let's take a look at some completed. Oh, absolutely. Images now, of yes. boats that you finished. Yep. So you you brought several, which are beautiful. I have, I have. So this one, two boats. These are yep, two boats, and the two boats are. Um, I, I find this like to be a very romantic piece, and it's a piece that I did um, trying to work out some color complexities with with uh, um, colors that really complement each other. Um, and on some color wheels, those might be considered opposite colors, but they might also be considered complementary colors. And the red outline there. And the red outline is from the underpainting. Oh. So there are times when I'll do an underpainting with where the red seeps out into the painting just for a little bit of um, just for a little bit of interest there. Okay, yeah, no, I like that. It really makes it pop. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this, yeah, this is different. Look at that color palette. It, this is Trois Bateau 3, because I had worked on 1 and 2, which didn't work out, but 3 did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, these are more muted, muted tones again. So it's again with a um, pretty close to a primary palette, but it has a lot of mute, muted tones to it. So I've added some white in there, some titanium white in there. I have experimented with mixing different colors and tried to keep the lightness of the water in this right. one instead of going into a darker blue. So that's where the shadows of the boats and the reflections are Correct. really pronounced. Beautiful. Thank you. So, wow. Yeah, this one really pops. This is called Bottom of the Boat, and this is one where I really cropped in on the image that I was using. And I wanted to go for a really powerful color combination of the orange and the blues. Um, and, it, and I believe it turned out to be a pretty nice painting. Uh, pretty nice in the color. Yeah, beautiful. Colors. Very nice. And the lines are nice, too. I like the lines in that one. This is just called Small Boat. And it's actually a small boat picture painting. And um, this was one of my first. I thought I'd bring in one of my first paintings. So, uh, and it was just a cute little boat that I saw in a magazine. Um, so, and I decided to replicate that a little bit, although I made some different changes to it. So talk a little bit about the colors of this one, because these are different. Right. So the colors of the water are, sa are, are muted. The color of the boat is more saturated. And the outline of the boat is very clear where the white is. And so the shadow um, shows very boldly in this one. And that was sort of what I was aiming to achieve with that. And this is, reminds me a lot of when I was first looking at Melissa Chandon's work. And she does a lot with boats and shadow and contrast. Ah, there's another Trois Bateau. That was the first one I did which I was very pleased with, actually. Um, and this one has a lot of contrast in it that I like a lot. This is like really bright sunlight. I do like the contrast in this Yeah, one. so the shadows are really dark and the white is exactly. really pops out. It reminds me of maybe Greece or someplace like that with a few rowboats tied up. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. I like the way you work with shadow in your paintings. And it's fun. Excellent. Well. Tell us where people can see your art. They can go to Gallery House in Palo Alto, which is where my art is. Um, they can also go on my website anytime. OK. And, uh, well, tell us a little bit about Gallery House. Gallery House is a wonderful gallery uh, with many artists, all different types of artists, 3D, 2D, photographers, ceramic artists. And uh, it's a wonderful place uh, where we all contribute quite a bit mm -hmm. to maintaining the gallery and running it. 
Cool, and you have regular shows there. And we have regular shows yes. there. Mm -hmm. And then are you part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios as I well? I am. This is my third year in it. Oh, um, excellent. I really enjoyed it. I meet art enthusiasts that come through my house. I have it at my home. Mm -hmm. And I um, meet other artists. And I've always learned a lot through the Open Studios. Great. So can you tell us just a really short story of maybe one of your favorite paintings or how you got involved with painting? I will tell you a, a short story about one of my very first experiences when I was in high school. Oh, cool. And my uh, high school art teacher, Mr. Modovich, asked us all to paint or draw a fur covered teacup, a fur, fur lined teacup. And I sat, <laughs> I know, and I sat yes. in my seat just astonished and feeling crushed because I had no idea what he was talking about. Came up with some lame production of what I thought he was talking about and of course um, didn't realize that it was a fa after a famous um, Oppenheimer uh, uh, piece of artwork and uh, um, when he showed us the picture of what it was supposed to look like, I, I definitely felt like maybe this isn't the right thing for me. But he was so motivating that I kept on going. So that was a um, fun experience. Hard, but fun. Yes. <laughs> and so for the acrylic painting, you can, are you planning on continuing with the boat series or cityscapes? Or what's your future look like? Well, I am, I am going to be going. Um, uh, fortunately, with Melissa Chandon on a to a workshop in Spain coming oh, up nice. in September. Beautiful. So I hope to do some more um, color balancing acts, and um, I'm also dipping my toes into abstracts to see what comes out of that. So not so, having such a structured plan like right. an idea like the boat and the sketch and exactly. the photos. So you're going to be working on that. Exactly. Well, excellent. So. Well, I wish you luck on those tours. That sounds fabulous. Thank you. So you're going to take lots of pictures and bring oh, them back yeah. to your studio. Will you be painting there as well? We'll be painting there as well. Oh, nice. Some plein air, some painting in studio, and it should be a fabulous wow, time. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here on Talk Art. I really enjoyed your demonstration. Your paintings are beautiful. Thank you, Sally. Yeah.